so the votes they are done. Not sure there's been any difference since last time. I think it hasn't changed since Monday. I mean last Who's Monday. Who's talking? I don't know you. Go away. So that's the result. I will put it on the new page. New page 221, 222, 3. I will make a mistake earlier. Demos, demos. Uh, I'll do one. About site sign up. Then, so this one can go away. This one, blah 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 blah. One six. Let's see. Okay, and one six. Eventually, we'll ship one six before one seven, maybe. And the more status. After one. Nothing new. Altered core. Since the 14th. We merged .NET 7 branch and I believe nothing. Broke. I think we checked on Thursday and you didn't see anything. Antoine updated to the latest C0. Then we use the same HP context more often just to apply stuff. I would go in this view. Uh, I will check that. New method to I content manager, a method that takes multiple content items. Get a sync with multiple content item IDs instead of a single one to optimize some queries. Uh, missing return URL query training content localization culture. Permission to load it in content owner. So there is a new permission. That is called edit content owner. UI fixes. Change update. Uh, <clears throat> fix validation summary style in separate page. Okay. Permission check logic in different contents. I mean, respect of provider and, 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 and. It's checking for view content. Instead of list, because the view content is the one that was used before here, and it should not, that should not have been changed to list permission and. This was creating a dynamic permission, which is unnecessary because the handler will check for the content for specific content types and so on. Here. And sharing violation on CI build. Okay, so there were some failures due to some concurrent access to some files. So now this is up before six and what do we have yeah so instead of 
do internet build and maybe it's a bug in the net bill actually but the issue was that because we have two tfms it will try to do some well it's maybe it's not a bug in the net bill but in some custom steps we have and that don't work with parallel builds so instead of going the net bill and it will do parallel builds between six and seven i see that chartier is now calling it twice so shut they can't use the same files like you know we generate some files for modules for dependencies for views and maybe these two concurrent builds on the same project were conflicting so now they are done serially okay Will that still build for .NET 5 or, nope. or previous? No. Nope. Before this change that we merged last week, we were just building for .NET 6. Uh, and now so we're building why, for why 6 do we and need 7. Both? What do you mean? Uh, why do we need, in this case, both 6 and 7? Is there a reason? Are you talking about this particular change from that line to these two lines? Yeah. So if you do the .NET build, the projects they are they have the target frameworks set to net six semicolon net seven. So if you call the net build, it will try to build the two of them in parallel. Like, oh let's build uh, six. Oh I have another core, let's build seven. And then there would be issues, concurrency issues, because in our custom steps in the project, we generate some files and read some files. And because they are built in parallel, apparently it causes issues for our build because it, we will try to build this, to create these files or read these files concurrently. So what Chantier is doing here is doing the build for Net7 first, and then when it's done doing the Net6 build, such that the two parallel builds can't conflict because they're not parallel anymore. Mm. But your question means that it's not about the parallelization, but why isn't there just 6.7 and not? Yeah. Um, so we just targeted the net six before. Yeah, so because, just that's, the, because that's the LTS, and because net seven is now new, we also target seven. Why two? Because six in an LTS, long term support, Got and it. seven is a short term. Is a it's called maybe stand, standard term support now or short term support. So like for one year. So we want to use the latest benefits of the net seven. So we need to build for the net seven. Um, it's a default TFM. And, um, but we can't remove the long-term support. So we build the two of them. Next year, when eight, when eight ships, we just support eight because eight will be a long-term support. This is what we did for six. When, we, when six shipped, we just built six. And then when nine ships, we build eight and nine. <coughs> Because nine will be a short term support and eight will be a long term support. That's how we do that. Makes sense. Um, that are the changes everywhere. That would have been nice to see a comment here such that the next person, yeah. like myself, will see that and say, oh no, we can remove that and just say, no, don't remove it because we need to keep it for the next release. And maybe it was, you know, maybe historically we had net six here. So when I did the merge for net seven, I probably removed the TFM, which was there, like net six, saying we don't need to, we can just build for everything. And it was probably there because before we were building also for five. So we have maybe had net six and net five, then we removed net five. And then I removed net six. And now we are back to there. That's why we need a comment for the next time. I don't remove it again. Uh, simplify localization options in reuse is the H on setup. Options. Okay, so this is reverting to before plus the new ones. Maybe because the setup we also find 
will match the ones from the browser, but we still provide the new ones, which are the standard ones. And now we don't have the custom one here anymore, but we have a thing. What is that thing? How does it work? OK, text it, it takes the request localization options and updates them. That's weird. We trust. We shall mention theory on that. They know what they are doing. Fixing stuff. Upgrade AWS SDK version. Why not? Upgrade. So on to one, you've got some competition here. We shall be updating the versions. Do MK docs. Docker image, which I forgot about. Thank you, Mike. Should be better. Okay, and I was just thinking, why do we support that so many this way? Default plural rule provider, what happened there? Refactor. Okay. Ooh, okay. Good. All good questions. Did I miss something in the chat? Like it was yesterday. Hmm. 1.6, I would say it was the best version ever because I believe this is when we shipped the, what, the projections module. Uh, it could be, yeah. And the uh, dynamic compilation as well. So there were a lot of important projection changes. Modu projection module is the best module ever. I remember the demo. Everyone was blown away. I agree. Do we have a restart? Do we have a one six somewhere? I think it's 2015, could it be? Yeah, even but earlier. one nine, but we don't show it there. One nine, I think, was when we migrated with the it merged the body in XML. But the other one, yeah, no, one six was before. Ah, but I think it was the projections. Best, the second best demo ever. In my opinion, yeah, InfoSet. Um, one eight only? Okay, I would say, okay, so, well, and only, I was saying one night. The second best demo ever was, I remember, the workflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which now is called today Elsa, right? Everyone knows that Elsa is just a workflow from Ultra One and Ultra Core. But 
the fact that it was completely new. That's great. OK, so just saying, oh, Antoine is too fast. So what do we have in 1.6? What's new? No, it was not there. So the projection feature was not in 1.6. Interesting. Then 1.5. I, I think five. it was earlier than that then. So because we are on this site, we should be able to find release. Wow. Projections. Say in here. One eight. No, that's weird. I am the eight. Wow. Projections. Well, it was it's a long like time ago. Queries plus custom views, but just by configuration. You will not type your templates, you will just say, I want to see this field, this property, sort by that. So it was all UI based. And in Orchard Core, we decided, no, let's make it all extensible. Okay, just saying. Uh, workflows, one will be shipping. No, maybe we. I don't think it was one A also. Oh, yeah, it was. On five. Workflows, no, it was after projection. So yeah, this version we are wrong from the documentation. Look at that, you see? Boom. Exactly the same as today, right? Edit activity, drag and drop, timer, send an email. We have nice icons. Same thing. Okay, so what was I saying? The thing. Why did I mention that? Oh, one six because uh, because Benedek is just talking about one cent thing about one six. Okay, so um, demos, Mike, are you ready? Sure. Yeah. Let's see. All right. Wow. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. OK. Yes. So <clears throat> I'm going to demo this uh, module that our good friend Neeraj has been working on. Uh, this is really the uh, his like, his GitHub um, page. And I can't I try to access the notification or the messages here so I can actually share this link, but I couldn't because I'm accessing using a browser. Uh, sorry, one second. So anyway, so this is a module created by Neerage, and it, sh it it will be paid uh, to get access to it. <clears throat> so the way what he did here is he created a way to create a sign sign up, so you can actually, if you have a SaaS environment, you can actually create steps for for someone to sign up, uh, pay and then get access to the, to the service. And everything happens um, right away. And I did added some stuff uh, that I wanted to add on the top of what he provide uh, to make it look uh, like this demo. So this is his module here. So if you uh, install his module, you have a site uh, registration page. Uh, steps where you can actually create the flow of the sign up process. Um, and for me, I created a, a page called school so I can capture school related information. Uh, it, this can be anything you want. And all we're doing here, we're adding the widget. So you can really add any widget you want to capture any information you want during the sign up process. So as you can see here, I put a paragraph and then we'll see the front end. And then here I put address, city, state zip code um, there's another page here uh, to capture information to create the admin account so i grab the username admin password verify the admin password and email again here you can add anything you want there is a step here to verify email um, so uh, there is uh, you can verify that email to make sure you're not registering junk and then at 
here you can also capture a payment. He built a complete integration with Stripe. So uh, uh, this will be utilizing Stripe. And then you can, you know, you're, you're finished. You're finishing the uh, steps. So here you can add any page you want. You can remove a page if you want. Uh, everything has uh, an event. So you can hook into every step through code as well. So it's not always a UI. Uh, but if you want to do something of a specific um, step, you can do that using a, a handler. I uh, did a good job on that because I'm utilizing events to customize this uh, how I did it. And then I took this, um, I took this and I created something on the top of it, which is called products. Um, this is, there's not much here. It's really a content items that I create to be able to create a product. So the user can select uh, what product they want to pick in order to sign up. And we'll just see this in a second. Uh, so just a title position where you want the product to be. Uh, and then uh, there is a way to put a setup amount uh, if you want uh, to charge someone X amount of money to set up and then amount. And then how frequent do you want to charge that customer? Um, then here, I, you can select the recipe. So you, sometime that this product is used, you have this uh, recipe being executed and you can have a feature, a, 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 a features profile added. Um, in this case, I added a way you can add add-ons to your product. I'm not, we're not going to worry about that, but you know, maybe you want to put limited, I don't know, two gigs of space or two gigs of database or whatever the case is. So anyway, this is just a, a, a way to select the product. So this is the admin function. This is the main thing is to creating a site uh, registration page. But once you have that, um, this is a front end. So I created a, a site where I put my widget. So this widget, all it does, it just display my products in a, in a, in a, in a, in this format. And in this case, I can select whichever product I want. So let's say I want a blog site and then you can sign up with a, bl a blog site and then you can hit sign up. And the next step is going to follow through whatever that site sign up. So now we entered the site sign up process. So in here we can put test, site abbreviation. In this case, I'm actually using the site abbrevi abbreviation as a tenant name. So I'm just going to call it blog five, uh, uh, one, two, three, Main Street, Las Vegas. Um, whatever, Nevada, Nebraska, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're gonna go through it. So this is gonna be the admin account. So I wanna make sure I provide info that I can actually use to log in. Uh, I guess I mistyped. If I can type, but I can't. So this is, uh, and here, this is the email ver verification. So it sent me an email uh, with a six digit code. I'm gonna grab that from the file because my emails go to the file. And here's the code to verify that email. So we know that the email is valid. And now it's asking you to provide a credit card. So there's a fake credit card here that we can use with Stripe. This is Stripe. Uh, test data and it's a test mode. That's why we're connected to dummy site. And we're not gonna care, care about that. So everything is verified payment. So now you see what you're paying for. So here uh, I'm saying that, you know, you're paying due now is $135 because you paid $100 for initial setup fee plus $35 for monthly. So that's how much you're gonna pay now. Uh, and then you can hit finish. And then uh, once you hit finish, if things work as planned, hopefully we'll have a brand new site and we'll get redirected. So right now we're here and there you go. So now I'm in a new site called blog five because that's my site. And I have brand new site within seconds after I make a payment. So this right here, it's something, it's customizable. Uh, you, like I mentioned earlier, you can add any fields you want. You can remove fields if you want. If you don't 
really care about school information. You don't have to. I just did that because that's what I want. And if you want specific fields, you can add specific fields. So one thing I did because I am capturing uh, the, uh, where did it go? Uh, school abbreviation. Uh, yeah, up here. So school abbreviation right here. So I actually use this value to create the tenant name with. So I'm utilizing the events in code to ensure that that value is not used. Um, so that's something that I'm using code, um, basically because I'm taking a, a user input and making sure that the user input is valid and also that key doesn't exist before I create it, right? Because you can't do that. And here, whenever you create, uh, like you add values, you can actually map them. So if you look at data right here, he has a way for you to map this input to that sign up process. So like if you want, so for example, if you want this value to be utilized as a site name, you can map it to site name. And what this does, it allow you to take whatever value in this field and map it to site site name. Uh, this is a property in your app settings, I think. Uh, but you have other uh, values or other uh, fields that he utilized for the sign up process that you can map to. For example, if you're capturing uh, billing information, you can map it to customer billing, first name, blah, blah, blah. And this information goes, I believe, goes to Stripe whenever you create the customer <clears throat> in Stripe. So there's few fields here that you can utilize. Um, and because I'm utilizing a product here, so because I'm doing that, what I'm doing in my events also is I'm mapping, if you select this product, I'm mapping the site recipe and the feature profile. So whenever we create the uh, the tenant, we assign the setup recipe and we set up this feature profile for that tenant. So you can control that. Uh, there's a little bit more here that I'm not too familiar with, uh, but every time you create a customer, uh, somebody signs up, you'll have a customer here. So obviously these are all dummy data because I don't have real data. But here, the idea is that you can see the payment information. So if someone paid, uh, you can see those payments right here in the account profile. You can edit this information. So as you can see here, there's a lot of information that you can provide. And the reason why there is no information here, because during the sign up process, I didn't really map much data to the customer information. So if I mapped uh, during the sign up process, the first name, then that first name would show it up here, but I don't have that mapping. So that's why you don't see it. Here you'll see payment methods. Um, so we saw earlier how you can do a monthly setup, monthly payment and, uh, and like annually billing. Unfortunately, this module does not initiate the recurring payment. And that's something that he is working on. I know that for a fact. Um, and eventually uh, the next version of this uh, module will have a way to automate the payment. And I do think uh, he might be waiting and I could be wrong, but uh, he could be waiting on us to provide the jobs uh, functionality that we talked about a few uh, meetings ago because background task, if you create a background task that process these payments on the schedule, you could have an issue with double payment. Uh, and so we don't want that. And again, this is this is what I'm guessing why he haven't got to it yet, but I, I could be wrong. This is just, uh, this is, I know it's an issue if he decided to go that route, he's gonna encounter that issue. Um, and in here, uh, he has a payment providers. So with a payment provider, you can create or add payment provider. He only have integration with Stripe. So when you create a Stripe, <coughs> you can provide the secret key, the publish publishable key and the webhook secret. Um, and one thing I did here, if you notice that I actually on the side while this project was working, I have the Stripe CLI was working. Um, and that's how all these uh, uh, events were taking place, as you notice in the CLI, 
Um, so as I was signing up or whatever, I was getting these events from Stripe because I am in a test mode running locally. So uh, that's what's happening right here. And, and then let me see what else. Oh, and he has uh, another feature. It's called License Manager. I don't want to get into too much details with it because I don't have a lot of knowledge about it. But he, so this is, I'll just speak quickly. So adding a license, he actually created a way to license any product that you want. Um, and so here you can go in and add the license to, to your application. And there is a license manager that validates uh, the code. Um, as you can see here, um, there's a, a trial uh, license that I'm utilizing to be able to use this feature. Uh, so he has this. And if you want to utilize this licensing into any plugin that you have with his setup, you can. Um, all you have to do, I believe, is, is implement a class, uh, implement an interface to validate your license. So you can add a license, but you'll need somehow to validate it, right? And so for him, he has a, his own custom implementation that utilizes, that validates this, uh, his license key in this case. Uh, again, I don't know much about what goes in here in the license and um, I know he's working on improving it. So that's a, a, an addition module that he has uh, that uh, you can utilize. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I would love to try to answer them. Uh, but if I can't, maybe we'll get an answer from Neeraj. But I've utilized it and I've been providing him a lot of feedback since he started implementing it. And uh, I've been, the I've, I've used it a lot. So I, I know a lot about it. So if you have any questions, I might be able to answer. But if not, uh, we can get an answer from Neeraj. Unfortunately, he's not here right now. That's it. Questions, comments? Thank you. Yeah, I'm in the comments I put, if you use workflows instead of event handler, maybe that's how it works, but it's cool to be okay. So can you add custom pages, custom steps? In the... Yes, you can. Uh, so you can go here to page settings and you can add, like if you want a page between this page and this page, you can click here and then you have a new page right in here. So one one feedback I had for him and I wish he would change in, he said he's gone to. So the, the only thing that, this is a nice setup, right? So to be able to create steps, but here it's kind of concrete to site registration, which is great, but it might be nice to be able to utilize, um, like creating multiple instances of this, right? Maybe I want site registration as one instance, but maybe another instance, maybe I want to create a, a, a registration for another service, right? So it might be nice to be able to create multiple instances of this, which is in this case, only a site page registration, uh, just like we have product content and content items. So I would think site page will be like a content type, but then we can create an instance of that, uh, of that uh, the sign up process that you can utilize for something else. Uh, so my, that was a feedback that I, I had for him. Yeah, wizard feature. Yeah, wizard, exactly right. With a route, and then you can go into that, and it's like a form, like the forms module, but multi-step. Yep. Yeah, that would be useful. Lots of people, I'm sure, want that to like to create uh, bold or custom forms, complex forms. Yep. Um, Interesting. I was hoping Zoltan is here because uh, he's the reason why I did this demo because last couple of weeks he showed uh, the net uh, .NET, page that .NET. they had. Yeah, the, the, the .NET, yeah. And I had questions, but yeah, I was, I'm sure he'll watch this recording and provide us some comments if anything. So it should be, so I was mentioning without, it should be a feature of the forms module because it's really, of front end forms 
and this is why we have the forms module because it doesn't work for something else that is not a form. So it has to be part of the forms module. So you can split the form into multiple steps. That will be interesting. So you will have a form, but there is another concept which is like page or step. And then, yeah, it's interesting. I'm going to do that extending forms to have the notion of steps. Even in the editor, it would just be another higher layer where you create a thing and you drag and drop form elements and then you could go next and conditions for to go next and workflow activity. And yeah, cool. The other side, that would work. Okay. Um, that's good. Thank you, Mike, for showing up the, to work from Mirage. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Should I share? I, I will. Uh, one six because harvest. Talk too much about harvest. One six or chip call. But my first. One six, one six, one six issues. I think we closed a few of them last week. I think someone. Sixth one, so issues. We still have some. Um, There's also a create a PR for oh. one point six. It's it should be a simple. Yeah, it's because of that latest change we did to the, the background tasks. Much information. Wait, check on. Oh, it's there. We check on Thursday. Uh, it's not looking on six. Um, issues looking one six. That well, that PR actually is blocking because what? it. Well, because right now, if you if you take that and release it, all the titles will not show up for old instances that are saved in the database. That's why okay. I tagged it with one point six. Okay. Should find an issue tag tag with 1.6. So we can track it in issues. This way it's easier to know what's blocking. Sure. An issue is blocking, a PR isn't blocking. <laughs> if I don't see any issue in 1.6, I'm like, okay, nothing is blocked. So there is no need for a PR to unblock. Um this one. Nice to have there is a PR, it should be fixed soon, maybe by Thursday. Um, maybe not blocking either. Uh, blogs in displaying the localized calendar, I will have to check Thursday. That doesn't seem to be a big issue because there is only this instance of the problem that is just CLA, not blocking 1.6, just some. I won't put it to 1.6, I will just put it as priority zero. We have something P0, but looking what six or a release. Um, is maybe a migration issue. Maybe just documenting problem, how to migrate. Same thing, migration issues. And that we should test because now we merge net seven, we might have fixed some project templates.
So to be tested, I don't remember how we test it last time. Maybe we need to create the packages, put them in a folder and test the templates. At the same time, I think we changed. I think the issue was with how the version was. Yeah, I think I fixed it. Um, the version were passed incorrectly to the NuGet packages, and I believe I fixed it. I was able to repo and then fix the, the, the bin scripts such that. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I fixed it. So why is it, why isn't it closed? Or maybe I fixed it before the issue was filed, but for one five it was too late. Um, Boom, that's X, I think. It's a C version used in template. Uh, oh, generation argument, blah, 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 preview, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Forcing the version to be the same as the one we're shipping otherwise it will not match and then the templates will not match something like that so that's part of fixing the problem template default settings are generated yeah 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 you see template default settings are generated on build and the template default settings contain the version of orchard to reference so the issue is that at the time we build, we have a version and the package use a different version and then there was a mismatch. Default value or the actual version, yep. So that's fixed by that, I say. OK, so I believe on Thursday we'll have everything. Um, and uh, so let's focus on that on Thursday. OK, to rush a lot of, the of issues last week. We can check for the um, migration, mutation or closes issues and 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 merge this PR. Check this one. Or maybe there is nothing we can do. So one block one dot six then. Interesting. So that should fix. We'll look at it on Thursday. Interesting. All right. We missed that. Good questions. That's the current focus on this year. Um, the peak harvest. Anything new? Mm, yes. Uh, I have just a few points. Uh, so as you uh, posted as well. Uh, we have the the final date, and I wanted to ask: uh, if, Did you have uh, any time to check the Excel what I've sent you last week about no, the price? Did I, 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 uh, I don't even remember. I received the uh, Excel, so I will check. Uh, on my side, I have news. Uh, I confirmed that the we have. Uh, 
the budget from the Net Foundation assets that we got from the past ones. So I got confirmation that they confirmed the amounts and that they agreed. Oh, that's, that's that. really. That's so really what um, I also have uh, like two, three or four uh, company who open who are open for uh, sponsoring the event. I am um, talking about the details with them now. So awesome. I think this is this is also a, a really good news. And uh, I wanted to ask you because uh, Benedek had me and uh, we collected the sponsors from uh, the past events and I saw that Asia also uh, sponsored That's the same thing. That was the, the sponsor, Asia by Boss. That's where I worked before. Oh. Uh, be so oh. my, mm -hmm. my management was Asia before mm -hmm. the team moved to what is called the developer division, which owns Asia Studio. It's the same thing. SPNet was in Asia, now SPNet is in so it used to be, that's why it was called Asia is sponsoring because it was the mm -hmm. Asia management. Okay, so. okay. I, I wanted to ask you about this, mm -hmm. but it's, it's fine now. Thank you. And uh, so one more thing is that um, I uh, contacted Mike that I think that now we should, uh, we, we try to uh, assess uh, who would participate. And I, I wanted to ask you uh, if um, you can suggest anything or what have you done in the past uh, to see how, how many people would uh, join um, the event? Really? Uh, how, how did we do? We had no idea. We just um, had the budget and created the event and then people starting started registering. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you didn't uh, you you didn't do anything before it to see if if enough people open for it or something like this. I don't think so. Yeah, OK, OK. I don't remember anything. It's just that we did that every two years, maybe every year. I don't even remember that. Uh, and <laughs> The number was almost the same every time, like five less, and no, that that was it. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I don't know. Okay. And um, I and, and every and every time we were like, wow, that was so many people want to come. Wow, that's awesome, right? And you didn't expect some people you didn't even know them, like you don't expect them to to join because you don't even see them in the community or in the issue or at meetings, and then they show up at the the, mm -hmm. the event because they have yeah. nothing to share and then they are like, yeah, I'd like, go, so they come. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because, um, you know, uh, for uh, 18 people uh, replied on uh, Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, but we realized that not everybody voted, as you also yep. said that you didn't want to vote because most of the time is okay for you. And um, do you have an approximate number that, you know, we should at least be, I don't know, 30 people to have a successful event or uh, something like nope. this? I can't say. For me, 500 is successful. And uh, successful means we have enough to cover the budget. And then if mm -hmm. it's 10, 10 people are happy, it's successful. Because... Mm -hmm. okay. You know, I mean, okay. yeah, it's, it's better if we're 500, but maybe for the 10 people to join, if we're 10, it's better because they have closer exchange than if there were 500. So, I, yeah, successful means we are in the budget and there is an event and people are were happy to join and and meet okay. and exchange. Yeah. That's the idea. Yeah. So yeah. send uh, all the whole long week and then it will be successful. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Benedek, do you think it's possible? Yes. <laughs> I would love to have that, yeah. <laughs> it would be strange if there were like 20 people from us and then maybe five, five, five other, including Sebastian. So <laughs> you can just come to Hungary, that would be cheaper. Maybe. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, I I also wanted to assess people because uh, the hotels are, you know, asking for, and also the sponsors are asking how many people do we expect. So maybe I will uh, <laughs> try to get. Don't look at the, the past. By the past, we were between 40 and 70, so an average on 50. Mm -hmm. The last one, I think it was something like 50. That That's what usually that's the okay. done wrong. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I, I think on that, if once you actually post like the meeting agenda, what's what's in there, get people excited about coming, and we have a, a final date and a final place, people might start actually booking their trip, and then we'll probably have a better understanding of who's yes. really come. So. Okay. Okay. Um. I don't know, uh, Benedek, did you want to say something else or? Uh, yeah, I would just ask, uh, when do you think the the location and the, and the dates would be finalized? Mm, I, I actually think that uh, it uh, should be finalized uh, in, uh, in the next week because uh, you know, then we can uh, move forward uh, with, uh, with the organizing. I uh, actually just got an email from uh, Jay Harris, uh, another contact of us, that he would also maybe help with the organizing. So maybe it would help to move forward faster. But also we are in contact with Mike and uh, I Where think, is Jerry's? Uh, uh, he's from Las Vegas as well. I didn't know that. And I don't know him. Well, I know <laughs> him because he's been a contributor like you, Mike, for years on Orchard One. But I haven't heard from him like in five years. And uh, mm -hmm. but he used to be a big contributor, big proponent also for Orchard. We never met him in person, but uh, he was uh, he was very active in the community. Interesting. Good to know. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, um, Zoltan or Benedek suggested him to me because he also he already organized a dot .NET meetup in Las Vegas, if I remember well. So let's see if he knows people that could host the, the event somewhere for free, and then it's a go. Can you, uh, when you write him, can you copy me so I can get in touch with him as well? Maybe me and him, we yes. can, we can get yeah. together and, and prepare whatever is needed. Yeah, of course, that would be really cool. Uh, I will also forward the email uh, for you as well. Thank you. Thank you for the help. Okay. I can I can see your you have some questions <laughs> in in the who is Benedek and who is Mike. <laughs> you really think it's serious? It's not serious. Forget about that. Just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Okay, so that's good. Uh, so let's continue on that and see if we can get a location. The date is fixed: twenty second, twenty third. Should be in Las Vegas. If Jake can help, also that's great. Uh, next step is to find the location. Personally, I really don't care about the hotel um, arrangements because, because of the they want some room, some rooms, and people usually never go to the hotels that we suggest unless it's the, in the meeting room there. But even that, uh, in Santa Monica, we were in a hotel for the rooms. Same thing in Alicante, and nobody were in these hotels because. They, they were finding better um, opportunities. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I see. Uh, okay, so next, uh, the space. Okay, okay. good. Okay. I, will, I, I will try also to send some emails. I did, but I didn't get an answer, so I will send more. Um, also, done. Do you want to review a PR that we reviewed no. last week? Thursday, it's time. One or two. Okay. Thursday. <laughs> Oh, the one. OK, thanks, everyone. Time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a next week. Bye bye. 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 bye.